Hello, Letterman Row watchers, listeners. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. Uh, this is Kerry Combs, Ohio State's <laughs> defensive coordinator. This is Bermanology, and uh, we are taking some time to, to catch up with Kerry, who's back in Columbus. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, as soon as you started back in Columbus, you went on the road, right? You got right. you got here, you left. You went, up, hit, yep. you went up to Muskegon, Michigan. You saw Cameron Martinez, uh, who signed his letter of intent with Ohio State today. Yes. What, did, what was it about Cameron that you saw that... You know, I think this is interesting because you were kind of told, hey, this is the guy that he's committed. We need to, to wrap him up, right? Sure, sure. But you still have to like the kid and what you see. Absolutely. And the first thing I asked was, well, send me the film because you, you need to know what you're recruiting right. and what you're getting into. And I, I'm going to tell you, his film's electric. Now, it's offensive film. I mean, he put the ball in his hands. He's either scoring or throwing it to somebody who's scoring. Every play for nine minutes. I don't think I've ever seen a video like that before. And uh, I was really excited about that. He's got great body movement, great ball skills, great speed, and he's a winner. And I think that's really important. You know, kids from winning programs, they refuse to lose. They hate to lose. And uh, those are great kids to recruit. So I loved him on tape. When you got to to go up there, you meet Cam, you you get what you guys wanted out of that, which was him shutting down Notre Dame and Northwestern and other schools and signing. Now that he's in, the whole 2020 class is signed, and you've had an opportunity to meet a couple of them, Ryan Watts, Legend Cavazos. Yeah. What do you see with Legend especially? And this is something I, I'm interested in because he's kind of a workout warrior, a, a guy that combine-wise is is pretty special. He's electric speed, uh, the, the, the height, the weight, everything sort of – prototypical yeah but he's only been playing football for a few years mm -hmm. and first couple of years he played safety and you guys i think the idea is to put him at corner what do you see out of cavazos that makes you feel confident that he can be that next dude i guess at that spot well he's long uh you know which is really important uh outside if you're going to play press uh he can run uh he's competitive um uh, i think that he's i, I wouldn't discount the fact that he's a workout warrior. What does that mean? It means he works out really well and he has the physical measurables right. that you're looking for. So to me, that's a that's a real positive. It's my job to coach and develop him on the football side of things with what we want to do. But I think he's going to be a very, very talented player here. And then you have Ryan Watts, right? Yeah. Who, who looks, uh, reminds me of Tyvis Powell a little bit yeah. in, the, in the the style and, and the, the, the stature. In the time you've gotten to know Ryan, what is right. it uh, him that you think? Hey, this makes him a right fit for us. Well, even longer, right? Which is which is a huge benefit. But his change of direction skills are good. We've had a chance to watch him do some things and in, in uh, the drill work the last couple of days. Uh, you know, to me, that in person evaluation is much better than what you get on film. Film is great. Games are competitive, but to be able to see a guy in person do things uh, is is very very valuable. And uh, I really like what Ryan does. As a coach, you come back here, the defensive coordinator roles now yours. With that, I think probably comes a little bit more responsibility on the recruiting trail, not just going out and getting guys you want, but picking guys that you want and maybe being a little bit more uh, demonstrative and saying, this is my guy, I'm going to go get him. Is that a change or is that um, are you going to be able to identify and recruit anyone that you want or is that role going to be similar to the past where it's like, hey, this, these are the guys we're choosing from or can you just get I, on the I table? Think, I think traditionally at Ohio State, the position coaches have been in charge of the players that fit our system and our style. Everybody recruits, right? So right. when it's a defensive player, Larry Johnson will help me with the defensive back. Greg Madison is a, is a great and engaging recruiter and, and so is Al. So you to me, Position wise, uh, the, the position coach is still Larry Johnson's gonna gonna pick the guys that he wants to play in the defensive line, and I'm gonna do everything I can to help him get those guys to be Buckeyes. And I think the same is true at every position. I don't I don't anticipate that changing at all. But for you, as the in the secondary, do you are you gonna be able to? Go out there and say, I only want this guy and this guy and this guy. And then you and Matt Barnes are going after those guys. Or yeah. is Matt going to have the opportunity to kind of like, hey, let's look sure. at this guy. Here. I think I think Matt is a very, very capable uh, coach. Uh, I'm excited. He's, he's recruited and recruited well. But I would tell you that that's not any different than it was in the past. I mean, if I wanted to go recruit Denzel Ward, uh, there wasn't anybody urban would say, go get him. You right. know, I mean, once we talked to him, watch a film and stuff like that, that, that's what we did. You know, the position coach knows what he's looking for. He's the expert at that position, and, and he should be able to identify the players that he wants to coach and can develop, and uh, and then everybody should help him recruit him. After two years in the NFL, yeah, what is it that you maybe are looking for now in a corner 
that or or now safety or whatever that maybe was different from before i think the things that are most important first of all i have a much better perspective for these kids about what it's going to look like when they get to the nfl you know and so i've had a, a chance to see it from every angle uh I, i'll be honest with you i think character is even more paramount in my mind than it was before uh i think that they you have to get the right kind of people uh you have to get people that are going to compete and are going to win I, I love kids from winning programs you're, you're going to have to get kids who in my opinion have some multiple position ability they have the ability to move around within the scheme and framework of your defense going to try not to put anybody in a box we have a we have prototypes at both corner and safety that we like but i'm not going to put anybody in a box i've just experienced a couple of guys at corner that were shorter than the guys that we have here and they played pretty well right so i'm not going to eliminate somebody because they don't fit necessarily the physical prototype that we've had in the past as you said you, you're looking for guys that come from winning programs you and your high school career uh, high school coaching career down in, in Colerain in cincinnati i actually spoke to jacob james's dad craig about you recently and, oh, that's scary. and he said that when you were taking over there that a lot of the coaches in the area thought kind of, kind of didn't like you because they, they didn't like me and I, it was hard i walked into elder high school as my first place i think when i went to recruit and the secretary said oh we don't have to hate you anymore and i said oh you hated me and she said yeah we hated your guts i said well i don't know why but they did so you have to overcome that i think that that's part of the you know but at the same time i knew where all the good football was being played at cincinnati i played all against all those guys so you go recruit their kids what is it like just for you being back here i mean i guess the last two weeks have been pr pretty much of a, a whirlwind but now that the recruiting dead period is in february here you have an opportunity to maybe settle in a little bit has it hit you yet is it surreal or are you just full speed ahead there's no retrospect or introspection uh, no there is some introspection I, I i think that you forget even in two years you forget just how special a place this is and and not just from the the fan base and not just from uh the facilities and all that kind of stuff but the inner workings of what's going on the quality of the player the quality of the kid you walk in your room and you look at them and they're bright-eyed and they're they're ready to go they're eager you go to mat drills and it's early and they're grinding and you forget about that stuff then you go to an academic meeting and you forget about the support that they have and all of the people that are so invested in this program and so I think that's an easy thing once you're away from it a little bit you have fond memories but you forget the daily detail that goes into the Ohio State football program which to me is extraordinary I can't imagine any place being more detailed in the lives of their players than Ohio State which is what it, it, it just has been reinforced uh, over and over again the last three days you talked uh, when we were in the big meeting with everyone earlier today about the decision to return and the, the challenge of leaving Mike Vrabel, who you got close to here. And you come back, though, to work with Ryan Day, who you yeah. worked with here and who turned down Mike Vrabel yeah, for a job sure a few did. years ago. Yeah. How important was the relationship with Ryan? Now, obviously, Ohio State in, in general is something you're familiar with and comfortable with. But right. is that something you could have done for a coach you didn't know? Nope. Nope. It's critical. I, I, I'm not really interested at this stage of my life in working with people that I don't know, that I'm not comfortable with, that I don't have huge uh, trust, faith, and belief in. And I have all of those things in Ryan Day, not just because they were a great team this past year, but because I know him as a person. You know, I, I remember the very first day uh, that I met him and our conversation had absolutely nothing to do with Ohio State or football, but it was about his son and his son getting on a Little League basketball team. I'll never forget that conversation. And it told me everything I needed to know about him as a man. What, what the, the coaching part is, to, is, is gonna be fine. As a man, this is somebody I have great respect for, a great affinity for, and uh, I am really looking forward to working uh, with him. Well, I know Ohio State fans are looking forward to seeing you on the sideline uh, again this spring. Spring football game, I'm sure, at Ohio Stadium will be uh, quite a, packed. a welcome home for you. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate you taking time. We'll Thanks. let you get out of here. Appreciate that. This is Jeremy Birmingham. That's Kerry Combs. This has been Letterman Rose. Bermanology. We'll talk Go to Bucks. you next time. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.